my first school must have been south of Pilot Mound in a little place called Clearwater. And after that, I went back to Winnipeg because my brother was missing in the war and the family wanted me at home. So that's when I went to the Argyle, which was where I really started in Winnipeg, yes. I must have gone there about 42. It was a, it was a big old, it was a big old school. Four story, I think, third or four story. And then they rebuilt the little one, the new school. Um, so that's where I started off. And, and you were at Argyle for how many years? I think eight, maybe. I don't know whether I was principal first at Cecil Rhodes or I guess I went to McCray for a while. I I was I they put they traveled me around here and there. Well, I had a long life. Yeah, <laughs> I think it was 42 years in the schools yeah, in Win Winnipeg. It was there were three su three sections for superintendents, and I think I was central and central and south. Because I was, you know, I was impressed with somebody who came all the way from Chicago. <laughs> just that I, I was surprised, you know. I just never thought of anybody being able to be connected to that tree or to that district to come from Chicago. That was quite, you know, that was a big important place. In 1891, when the Argyle School was just a little school, the principal told all the children that on Arbor Day they were going to plant trees in the schoolyard. There was a little girl, nine years old, named Bessie Goodman, who thought that the children were supposed to plant the trees. So she and her brother set out. They walked until they came across the Louise Bridge where they saw a little tree growing. So and she dug up this little tree on the river bank and brought it and the teachers were horrified because of course, by this time she was muddy and, and wet and whatever. And they didn't, they were having the trees brought by important men from the school division in top hats and what have you. So what to do with this crazy little girl with her tree? So they said, you can plant your tree over by the well. There was a pump. And so that's where she planted her tree was by the pump. The only place they would give her. Bessie was very disappointed when she found out she could not plant it. The teachers felt sorry for her, so they decided to let her plant the tiny tree. So Bessie dug a hole, and she and her brother planted the tree. And that, that was the only tree that lived and grew bigger and bigger, and the rest all went. You know, the ones that the city fathers came and planted didn't survive because nobody watered them. But it got to be a big tree, and I think it's still there. I think I understand it's still there. Now it stands ever so tall in the Argyle schoolyard, almost the tallest of all the trees. Now in the autumn when the maples have shed their leaves, the poplar stands green for quite a while. There it stood for 59 years and it's still standing. Now Mrs. Elizabeth Anderson, Bessie Goodman, is 68 years old, whatever date, oh there, 1950 I guess. So you were like that little girl who came with the, the tree to plant because she was Icelandic yeah. and she was new here. Yes. She was eight years old, I think, but she didn't understand what the teacher was saying about Arbor Day, so she thought she was supposed to plant a tree. Mm -hmm. So she was so happy to plant a tree. Yes. No, I, I love to tell stories that were true because kids like to hear of other kids that sort of fit into their lives. <laughs>